All right, guys, so here we are. We just got everything back from the machine shop. I have been waiting two or three years to finally get this thing going. But as you guys can see, we just got the uh, mounting plate for the uh, engine stand onto the Mini. Uh, this is a 1.6 liter N14 motor. Uh, I blew the pistons on it, and I believe I can be correct. It's been a while, but if I believe, I also messed up one of the connecting rods. Uh, either way, we're going with all fours internals. We have that over there on the table and everything. But as you can see, we have the oil pan, the oil pump, we have the cylinder head, the clutch, we have the flywheel and everything in here. So today we are gonna hopefully get into putting it together and getting the bottom end sealed up. Uh, maybe next weekend or just depending on how the shop schedule is, we'll be able to get this thing started. But overall, I'm gonna put this on. The engine stand. Put the pin in and then my dad's behind the camera. He's being camera shy today, but yeah, so now I can do this and I can spin it all around and do whatever I gotta do on both sides of the engine. Um, this one's got a bunch of different holes, so I can put a bunch of different angles, but yeah, we are uh, at KV Auto Sports building this motor. Uh, this is my shop with my dad, but I don't know if we're able to come in here and build this motor, so stay tuned guys while we build the whole motor. Hey, I want to show you So, we're going to kind of go through everything that is in the motor. We have, I believe, 77 and a half millimeter uh, CP Corello Forge Pistons. They were already sent out to the machine shop to get the motor board and stroked. This is a whole bunch of information on all the rings and all the information on the piston itself. You didn't stroke it. You didn't stroke it. No, just there. And then as you guys can see, you know, the pistons. And then you have all of your rings and your sleeves and everything in there. We'll go ahead and put this back. Looks like I'm missing one, so I'll figure that out in a second. Oh, there it is. Put that down there. In here I have the crankshaft, which was machined, I believe it was machined down a little bit. I don't remember the exact spec off the top of my head. 10,000 undersides. But as you can see right here and all across, they machined it just in a few different spots to make sure everything was balanced. So this is actually balanced. I was uh, I was wrong on what I said, which is okay. I'm still learning just as much as everyone else. So this was actually balanced to equal out the weight of the connecting rods and the pistons. That way everything works in conjunction with each other. I found the box of connecting rods. So I'm just going to open one of these kind of for you guys to see. I have Need for Speed H-beam connecting rods. They're forged. They will be going in with, I believe if I'm correct, I ordered ARP connecting rod bolts. Um, pretty much all of this will be going together with ARP connecting rods, or not, sorry, not connecting rods, ARP uh, fasteners and everything. They are one of the best companies out there for strength. A lot of people use them for high boost applications and everything else. They have different levels, so say so yeah, we're gonna set you guys up on a time lapse and we're gonna install and get everything worked out. We haven't worked on this, like I said, in over, I think it was over three years, my phone just told me. Um, kind of put it on the back burner, you know, life got ahead of us, so we're finally gonna get to it and we gotta figure out what's all here, what we need to order, and then we're gonna start putting everything together. And then I'll obviously order things and you guys will be updated in the next video, so. Do a time lapse.
So I can see, I know that you guys can see it in the time lapse, so I'm going to kind of explain one of the issues we're having. We have a thrust bearing that goes on both sides of these. It's basically just a half thing. Um, if he has one, which I think he does, I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, it's just a half moon, and they go on either side of this journal. And for some reason, when the crankshaft is in, it doesn't want to slide these in. But we did it off camera. I'm going to do it again just because it spun out. But we were able to drop the, crank, the crankshaft in with these already in. So we're going to do it again real quick. But that way, I'm kind of explaining to you guys in case someone out there is having the same issue. Hopefully this time it does it as well. So it did it again, which is awesome. Um, don't know why it's doing, why we had to do it that way over the, you know, over putting it in once this started in. But, you know, this is, this is weird. It's my luck that normally this type of stuff happens. It's both of our luck that things don't go right. So I'm just going to be proud that, you know, it just slid in. So back to the time lapse, back to, if I have to explain anything, we'll go there. All right, so here we are putting in the main studs, and we are making sure to only put them down hand tight, and then we will torque them to 50 foot-pounds. These are studs, meaning that they have a washer and a bolt that will go on top of them with uh, ARP application grease. And here you can see we are torquing them down basically from the inside out either direction, making sure they have even torque across both sides. And that about sums it up today. All right, guys, so I forgot to end out the video at the shop, but basically we were only able to get the crankshaft in. We bolted down the crankshaft, and it doesn't really spin. I think we got about a quarter turn of spin out of it, and then it pretty much locked up. Um, we brought it to a machine shop to have the whole machine shop done, or machine work done so that, you know, we didn't have to worry about any of it. I never had time for it, this, that, and the other. Um... But we had him go through everything and make sure that everything was going to work. He even asked us for some parts, so we got him some parts. Either way, um, we're going to give it back to him. Just tell him to look over it and make sure that, you know, when we get it back this time, that everything works and everything's free. And then we'll continue moving forward. But these are just some of the small setbacks you have when, um, you know, you're working with a bunch of different interchanging parts and people that, you know, motors aren't perfect. Just like anything else, things have problems. So... This is unfortunately, this is going to be video one, but I'm sure by the way this is going, there's going to be a lot of videos and a lot of parts to it, but it's all on the process of learning how to build engines and learning cars. Cars aren't always simple, but that's okay. That's the thing that we like to make the fun out of is learning how to fix them and learning how to make things maybe a little engineered better than what came from the factory. So that was a quick video of the Mini. So like I said, that is pretty much part one, and there's a lot more fun stuff to come from it. I can't wait to get the motor back in the car. Not really sure when that'll be, but it'll be this year for sure. So, hope you guys stay tuned and watch for the rest of it coming out. Um, I don't know, coming weeks, coming months for sure. So, stay tuned, like, and subscribe to see more content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.